Recap of prerequisite knowledge. Topic two, application of costs. Raw materials accumulate on the balance sheet and they're known as raw materials inventory. You then add direct labor and manufacturing overhead to the raw materials and they become work in process inventory. Then, as that inventory, the work and process inventory is worked on, when it is finally complete, that is, there is no more direct labor, raw materials, or manufacturing overhead to add, then it is considered to be finished goods inventory on the balance sheet. Uh, I say the term balance sheet, this may also be termed the statement of financial position. Both are used interchangeably. So to recap here, we have three different types of inventory accounts, raw materials, work in process, and finished goods inventory. Then when we sell this inventory, when we sell this finished goods inventory, it's expensed on the income statement known as cost of goods sold. And I say income statement, and I also may interchangeably say the statement of financial performance. Next, it's important to look at the cost of goods manufactured. So the cost of goods manufactured is what we transfer from our work in process inventory to our ending, um, pardon me, to our <laughs> finished goods inventory. So whatever we've completed manufacturing is considered to be the cost of goods manufactured and that's the amount that goes from our work in process to our finished goods inventory. So you'll see here, we add up all of our direct materials, add in our direct labor, our manufacturing overhead, and we have our total manufacturing costs. We may also start the beginning of the uh, beginning of the month, beginning of the quarter with beginning work in process inventory. So that means any work in process inventory that was uh, and our ending inventory from a previous uh, quarter or previous month. Then we have to minus out any ending inventory, uh, work in process inventory from the current period. So we have our total manufacturing costs plus what we started with minus what we haven't finished this time. And that gives us our cost of goods manufactured. So that would have been the amount that would be transferred from our work in process to our finished goods inventory. We also have our cost of goods sold. So remember from a previous slide, this is the amount that gets transferred from our finished goods uh, on our balance sheet to our cost of goods sold on our income statement. And the inciting event is when somebody goes into our store or goes into our online store and orders this and it gets sold. So here we take our cost of goods manufactured plus the beginning finished goods inventory minus any ending finished goods inventory we have left on hand. And that equals, equals the amount that was transferred out, the amount that was sold, otherwise known as our cost of goods sold. On our statement of financial performance, that is our income statement, we have our cost of goods sold, so our product costs, and we also have our selling and administrative costs, our period costs. Then on our statement of financial position, we have our raw materials, our work in process, and our finished goods, all inventory, all product costs. And we also may have our prepaid expenses, which may be product or period costs. Time for a question. You are a plant accountant for a main major manufacturer. You are preparing the calculation for cost of goods sold. Your colleague gives you a summary that indicates cost of goods manufactured is a million. At the beginning of the period, there was 100,000 in finished goods inventory. And at the end of the period, there is $340,000 worth of finished goods inventory. What is the total cost of goods sold during that period? Is it A, 760,000, B, 1.1 million, C, 1.24 million, or D, 1 million? The correct answer is A, $760,000. Let's see how we accomplish that. So here, I took our information from slide, hmm, let's see, 
four from this series, as well as the question from the previous slide. And now let's start off and calculate this together. I am looking for my cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold equals, and what I'm going to be looking for is cost of goods sold equals cost of goods manufactured plus beginning finished goods inventory minus ending finished goods inventory. And that'll give me my cost of goods sold. Uh, so now I go beginning, pardon me, cost of goods manufactured, 1 million, plus our beginning finished goods inventory is 100,000. And then minus what was ending was 340,000. And that gives me $760,000 worth of cost of goods. You guys ever get like this? You want, you want the formatting. <laughs> cost of goods sold. And why A is the correct answer. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in our last video for recap in the next one.